Hello to the chicos and the chicas. Surprise video. Now I am not talking about the Champions Chess Tour. That's going to happen in about 12 hours. But now I have got something else to present to you. And so let's dive right into an absolutely awesome game in which um, a fellow chessable... Whoa, chessable, no. Um, adult. Adult improver. That's it. That's the one. Adult improver is going to... Um, have a tremendous victory over a FIDE master. Um, this would also fit into my student's rock as uh, the player in the white trunks um, used to be slash still is my student. We haven't had a lesson for a while, that, but uh, I coached the Rat River Trapper for several years. So I would like to claim a little victory. So let's see what it looks like when an adult improver, someone who started taking chess seriously in their adulthood, takes on a FIDE master and succeeds in the challenge. What an absolutely motivating um, game that is ahead of us. So let's go. E4, E5, Bishop C4, Knight F6, and D4, which is the... Oh, some Russian dude gambit, I forgot. And I actually recorded this not long ago. Well, not recorded, but worked on it for my E4, E5 beginner's course. Trust me, it is a gambit. And the idea is that after takes... Um, white plays knight f3, and after knight e4, we play queen takes d4. And so, at the cost of a pawn, we are already gaining some momentum in terms of development, initiative, attack, and so on. And I'm going to say this a number of times in this game, but I'm going to start right here, right now, that I'm loving the fact that the Red River Trapper, our protagonist, is taking the fight to the opponent. He doesn't wait. He doesn't shy away from complications. He says, I am going after you. And that is a really powerful message. And already, as far as I'm concerned, he is gaining a psychological edge because he's the underdog. He could afford playing some timid, uh, passive opening, something safe, something that would allow him to survive, you know, the opening and the early middle game, London. But nah, he's he's not like that. He just goes like, nope, I am here to beat you, man, and I will do my very best to do so. And look at this marvelous opening prep, by the way. Knight f6, knight c3, knight c6, queen h4, bishop e7, bishop g5. Eight moves into the game, perfect development just about to castle and bring the rook to, to the game uh i can see a, a little bit of a morphe here i can see a little bit of uh you know tile if you like and i certainly can see someone who has learned the value of initiative and attack and not giving whatever about material and i must mention this to you that so many of my students and other improvers I follow go through these stages. So did the Rat River Trapper. It took a while for us to overcome this, you know, what do we exactly get for material type of thinking. And as you will see in this game, boy are those days gone. Let's watch. D5, castles. Really? <laughs> Delicious chess. Putting the first pin on the board, about 75 of those to come still. Uh, and d5 is under attack. Bishop e6, rook e1. Loving this. Let's, let's keep the pieces hanging. Let's bring more boys to the party. The pressure keeps on building, building, building. And actually, I spoke very briefly uh, to the Rat River Trapper uh, about this game after he sent it to me. And he told me that one of his main strategies for the whole entire game was to keep on creating new and new and new problems for the opponent to try to keep him under constant pressure and let's see if he cracks. Again, what a chad, right? Like, he is the underdog, like 300 points rated lower or whatever. I don't exactly know the numbers, but several hundred. And his strategy is to keep the opponent under pressure, constant tactical pressure, that is, and see if they crack. I mean... You gotta love the guy. He just goes like, hmm, I told ya, I'm coming for you. All right, H6 was played. All right, let's get rid of with the 7,000 arrows. And uh, we go like, well, no whackers because that's also pinned. So you can't take me because that's pinned. And so he goes, all right, I have got full development. All of my pieces are on optimal squares. 
can't possibly improve anybody. Time to strike. What does he do? He strikes. And he strikes like a legend. Bishop takes d5. The correct order, by the way. Because if he had started with knight takes, then after knight takes bishop e7 and knight c e7, it seems to me that uh, black is holding it together. In contrast, after bishop takes takes, we can now take with the rock. Legendario. And this is exactly how the game went, by the way. So check this out. Bishop d5, knight d5, rook d5. Now the queen is hanging with check. This is still not doable because there is a check there, check there. And if bishop d5, then after bishop takes e7, knight takes e7, knight takes d5, and white wins. Red river trapper, take a bow, man. You are an absolute legend. Actually, you also just did a boomski. Boomski! So, going back, after rook takes d5, opponent plays bishop g5. And we take back with the rook. What a cheeky dude, man. So cool. The rook is still immune to the capture because of the pin. Castles is not playable because of queen h6. Yet another pin. Um, and rook takes g7 is threatened. Because the queen is actually guarded. So king f8 was forced. And that was the point where... Uh, our protagonist, uh, the legendary Rat River Trapper, I don't want to give away his name, so I'm just calling him by his handle, uh, just got a tiny bit carried away, and at this point in the game takes a slightly irrational turn, but again, I'm loving the concept, because here it feels like uh, the attack is frizzling away and more than likely we'll have to accept a queen trade of um, some sort, but nah, he goes boomski. And he goes after black again. Now, this exchange sacrifice is unsound, but is nothing short of Tal-esque. In the sense that, yeah, when you are looking up on the evaluation bar on the top right, it's unsound. When you are behind the black pieces and you have already dodged like 75 different tactical tricks and then the 76 lands on the board, you are beginning to feel... Like a boxer who just keeps on dodging the punches one after the other after the other, but always in the fear that the next one is going to land. And that is exactly what's happening here. And this one is definitely not landing it, but it has the potential to pave the way for the next two. Correctly, it takes back. Queen h3, at least removing ourselves from this pin. Queen f6. And now brace yourself, guys, because this is where the game goes absolutely bonkers. Knight d5. I mean, this is a guy who could not have possibly imagined putting a piece on prey four years ago. Like, that was just a cardinal sin. And now, in this game, he hasn't been doing anything but putting pieces on prey left and right and center. More often than not, more than one at a time. Like I said, when I saw this, I'm like, oh boy, what a legend. What an absolute boss. And by the way, kudos to Black. So far, perfect defense. Absolutely perfect defense. If I really want to paint a fair picture, which I do intend to do, I must add, Black is ahead. But that doesn't take the credit away from uh, White because it's such a fun, enterprising, really cool style to play. Even if you lose, and this is why I like, by the way, this chess, even if you lose... You feel like, well, you left your heart out there, man. Like, I, I did everything I could, too good, bring on the next. But at least he's having jolly fine in the process, and it's nowhere near the end of it. What does it do? Rookie 5. Take my rook if you want. <laughs> it's just legendary. By the way, uh, I forgot to mention that, of course, the knight was immune to capture because of rook f5 winning the queen. And the same motif is at play here, rookie 5. Um... As far as taking the d5 is concerned. And here, the very, very calm and measured rook d8 would have uh, sealed the deal for black. Because now white really does run out of steam. I can attempt putting every single piece I own to put them on prey. But unfortunately now there are so many hanging that I can start taking without consequences. Because everybody else is still on. As is the queen trade. And um, yeah. Now the attack runs out of steam. So, uh, yeah, rook d8 would have been really, really unpleasant. 
Uh, and if, I don't know, if I pull the knight back, I guess I can just take and check. So, yeah, that could have been it. But instead, the Fide Master got greedy. He took e5. We took back. And now the two knights, knights actually secure a draw. A beautiful, spectacular draw with a perpetual check. Knight d7 check. King here or f7 actually. Oh, no, no, sorry. I have to go to f7 first. If I go here, this is going to be some kind of a Matutsky problem here. Check and if takes them mate. So I can't go uh, F uh, G8. I have to go here. But now actually I can. I remember that. Yeah, now I can surprisingly. Because even here after Queen E6, King H7, there is no mate. The best white has is a perpetual check. Note that Knight F6 check here doesn't work because the Queen covers that square. And Knight E7 doesn't do the damage because now the King walks. So... White even needs to be careful here. So that would have been the fair outcome. However, by now, Black burnt almost all of their time on the clock. And so the number one objective, as evil as it may sound, was to keep the game going, keep up the pressure, keep up the threats. Let's see what they do. So we take on e6. He fiddles away. And now, unfortunately, once again, the attack is long gone and we have to settle for, I don't know what to call it, bluffs, some slight initiative. Um, but black again is defending really well. But unfortunately for them, after take stakes, they miss the boat with queen f4 check and then rook f8. They play rook f8 too soon. And after queen e4 check, now the rook is a goner. And uh, I think rather fairly... We land in this completely dead draw, equal ish um, endgame, but there is no time on the clock for Black. And actually, after a few more moves, uh, Black went on to lose um, on the clock in an endgame that I dare say would normally be a draw. Um, it's a bit of a blemish in the end that um, White won the game on the clock, but if you consider the uh, all the efforts that were put into trying to win this game and risking the loss, on so many occasions and playing this super enterprising, super fun chess, I have nothing to say, but kudos to you, Red River Trapper. I'm very proud of you, man. That was a legendary performance. And uh, before I call this off, I just would like to mention something to you that I have been observing now and seeing uh, both on Twitter and uh, on other social media platforms. The term adult improver, I think, is a really nice way to talk about a really large, really large part of the chess community, which is people who picked up chess, not in their childhood, but in their adulthood. They love the game and uh, they would like to, you know, get better at it, study books, occasionally take a lesson, occasionally partake in a competition and just you know, see how far they can go. And I think that this is a really, really wholesome, really nice community. And now there is a bit of a mocking and mockery going on on Twitter, for example, about, you know, everybody is an adult improver and yada, yada, yada. I really think it's a great thing that, uh, you know, people pick up hobbies and if they are competitive hobbies, they try to get better at it. So all I can say is that kudos to you, all of you who consider yourselves to be adult improvers. I don't care where you started. I don't care where you are going. If you are having fun with this game, um, it is just awesome. And I really, really welcome you in the chess community. And as I just pointed it out to you through this analysis, sometimes we really get some absolute rippers. And I think nothing is a better motivation for all the adult improvers than seeing a game like this where one of us just managed to score a tremendous upset and beat an FM. So once again, congrats to the Red River Trapper and uh, keep at it, all of you adult improvers, because chess is a lot of fun. Learn it, play it, enjoy it. And uh, yeah, that's the key to happiness. On that note, I'm going to call it off now. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to sub, to like, to comment and to super like. And I am going to be back, I believe, tomorrow with the final result and the final outcome of the final uh, of the Champions Chess Tour, which is very likely going to be a Duda victory, by the way. He's already 3-1 up and seems to be in the driving seat. So let's see how we go. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. Uh, I will be back with the next one soon. Bye.